Where is the bookseller? An old diary. The Book of Zion is the foundational work behind Helena Blavatsky's Theosophical Movement. Its followers place truth on the same footing as a religion. What happened here? Let's start over. Where did they break in from? Blood. Seems like amateur work. To whom does this footprint belong? No sign of struggle. If the burglar smashed this jar, it wasn't intentionally. Was he hurt then? What sort of thief leaves his tools at the crime scene? What killed all these animals? What happened that made the burglar flee before finishing his work? What the... Charles Hawkins? Looks like the symbol rejected Hawkins. Where did I see it? What sort of power did Sarah Hawkins' painting possess? Sarah Hawkins helped hide something in this safe. Drake put in a great deal of effort to hide whatever is in here. Everything is linked to the Sarah Hawkins case. Drake left instructions on how to find the combination of his safe. Arkham editions? Never heard of them. How many volumes are there in this collection? Another volume by Arkham editions. Arkham editions. How many volumes are there in this collection? Another volume by Arkham editions. Arkham editions. Never heard of them. Cylinders that Drake tried to hide. I should perhaps listen to them. A strange amulet. I have a feeling I'd better not touch it.
Is everyone on this island taking sleeping pills? What link did he find between Charles Hawkins and an old amulet? Things are not looking good. A kind of chalice. And these red rocks, like precious stones, lie fixed, set in divine gold. To be the guardian of the grail does not protect me from its attractions, Henry. And I do confess it. I am willing to pay to know its secrets. I finally understood that we were only pieces on the chessboard of the gods. Let those of us who are still standing protect our White Queen from their dark soldiers. I see our number dwindling, and my will strengthens as my apprehension grows. We shall refuse to be the playthings of destiny. Dear friend, I thank you again for the anthology of the works of Arkham editions that you sent me. Uh, volume 9, Azathoth and Other Horrors, seemed particularly relevant to my research. I never tire of browsing through them. The Chalice of Knowledge. Freud's The Interpretation of Dreams. It's the work that laid the foundations of psychoanalysis at the beginning of this century. Message. man's condition is deteriorating. What says Dr. Fuller? It's his patient, after all. He... he's busy with Captain Fitzroy. He specifically asked us not to bother him when that's the case. Oh, of course. I'll see what I can do. Mr. Blake, can you hear me? I'm Dr. Colden. We'll take care of you. There's nothing we can do. I tried talking to him. He's catatonic. Dr. Fuller, please. No, don't. I know what you fear, but this man is dying. Marie, I'm begging you. He'll hold me accountable if you bother him. Perhaps you could examine him yourself first. I'll do my best to assist. Very well. I'll examine him. His skin shows abnormal loss of color and seems dried out. 
He's totally dehydrated. His fingertips and toes seem to feature a slight ring under the skin. Tender at the touch. Slightly sticky. 30-year-old subject. Severe hypothermia. Erythematous papules around the eyes and eardrums. Necrosed palubral tissue. Lord, this smell. Severe malnutrition. Swollen abdomen with traces of petechia. <sighs> Doesn't seem like an edema. Slight protuberances seem to indicate the presence of a foreign body. So, Doctor, an opinion? I'm not sure I have the necessary knowledge to treat this man. Don't say that. You're our most worthy doctor, after Dr. Fuller. Some of his symptoms are beyond my comprehension. What did you find? Did you examine his abdomen? It would seem there's something inside. He hasn't eaten in days. Are you certain it's not an edema? No. Can't you recognize an edema? Pushing with your finger won't leave a trace. And look at these bumps. <laughs> it's not like he could be pregnant. Whatever it is, this man has something inside him that shouldn't be there. We should operate on him at once. Dr. Fuller said not to worry, that the edema would go away by itself. You know, I'm not sure Dr. Fuller is telling the truth. In spite of the muscle contractions, his arms seem limp. Yes. They can't have decalcified, not at this rate. And yet, if there is a bone in this arm, it's softer than that of a newborn baby. What about his cranium? It's soft at the touch. It does seem like the skull of a baby. Look at these sticky rings growing at his fingertips. What can be happening? I'm sure you'll find an explanation. You have to. I see signs of hypodermoclysis, but he's still dehydrated. When was his last IV? He's constantly under perfusion. I've even gone beyond the recommended dose to no avail. And you won't believe me, but... When we bathed him earlier... He seemed to feel better? Yes. Like he needs an aquarium, not a perfusion. But that doesn't explain his condition. I almost don't believe it myself, but these symptoms are not those usually associated with the human species. What do you mean? Don't tell me you believe in extraterrestrials. No. This poor man is from our world, all right. But his body is undergoing unnatural mutations. And this transformation is killing him. His body simply can't cope. Where could he have gotten such an infection? I pray that it's not here. Dr. Cowden, may I know what you're doing to my patient? What I'm doing? How about what you've done to him? Let us calm down, my dear Marie. I don't appreciate your tone, nor your insinuations. I've done to him what I do to all my patients, provide him with the best available care. Your imagination is without limit. It's your homemade drug again, is it not? Those people are not your guinea pigs. There, there. What have you seen to put you in such a state? I've seen suction cups on his fingers. His falling body temperature. His dehydration. Had I only read the report, you know what I would have concluded, Doctor. Do I? Tell me anyway. I'm curious. He's no longer human. These are the attributes of... an animal. Fascinating. An animal, you say? Could you be more precise? Cephalopod, perhaps? <sighs> this amuses you. Your reaction does. I know your thirst for knowledge, Doctor. It's your innocent worries for this man that have you overreacting. For this man and the others whose medical files you've been hiding. I have to protect my discovery. These people owe me their life, but the world isn't ready yet. It will be in time. I will not let you do this. You disappoint me, Marie. 
but I still have hope you'll one day share my point of view. In the meantime, take care of your own patients and try not to forget who you're dealing with. Was that a threat? What did he mean? It was a warning. Dr. Fuller is this institution's founder and one of our profession's most influential voices. My word is of no weight against his. If I continue to protest, I will only ruin my reputation and career. It's scandalous. Can't we do anything? Is there no evidence of his crimes? Oh, that evidence exists. I'm sure of it. I need to find the missing medical files. And where would you find those? In his office? What if you get caught? I'd rather not think about that. I'm counting on your discretion. Of course, Doctor. You can count on me. I'll keep Mum. Chronic insomnia. Like half the island. No, you're pulling my leg. I'm not joking. I saw the schedule. She's alone in the bathroom again. And she still says nothing to that old witch, Donovan. Oh, listen to the way you talk. We've been waiting to be restocked girl. for weeks. <laughs> and the answer isn't. The doses prescribed by Fuller are far too high. No. You can imagine that she doesn't dare say a thing. That silly goose lets herself be trodden on. She's a witch, an old hag. It's temperamental, if I understand correctly. What a pest. It's so unfair. Elizabeth? You all right? Why is this room in such a state? Because, as always, I'm cleaning it by myself. And the water was once again shut off this morning. I had to bother Mrs. Donovan again, giving her a new excuse to belittle me. Come now. Don't let that witch sap your morale. We're lacking in qualified personnel and she knows it. Her petty punishments won't last forever. I'm trying, Doctor. I'm trying. It's just that sometimes I imagine she shuts down the water herself just for the pleasure of harassing me. <sighs> Her time is much too precious for these kind of petty games. Anyway, I've learned my lesson. I'll hold my tongue next time. Courage, Elizabeth. Thank you, Doctor. Hay fever? What's he doing here? Please, uh, my chest. His perfusion oh. of a semi physiological solution doesn't seem to work. He's undergoing a ventricular fibrillation. Nurse? Deborah, come and help me, please. His potassium level is too high. Replace it with 2% glucose solution with insulin, calcium, and sodium bicarbonate. I'll tend to it right away. Thank you. He's in your hands. He broke his back in an accident down by the docks. Ah, oh, a whaling station. What's wrong with me? What are you talking about? Ah, uh, doctor, is that you? Yes, it's Dr. Colden. Tell me what happened. It's the old whaling station. See? The one that hides the smuggling business. Oh no, not them. They don't go on that side of the island. Everyone in his place. The captain on one side, Cat on the other, and me. Well, I've been to the whaling station, I have. What did you see there? Nothing, nothing at all. The floor was all rotten and I fell straight through. And that's how you broke your back? Perhaps, no idea. Passed out. 
I'll just sleep a bit. Dr. Colden? She recently came back from the surgical block. She's stable. Given her file, a nephrectomy would have been inevitable. But Fuller was able to save her kidney. Intoxication from breathing organic vapors. Another insomniac. I should find the cause for such a widespread trouble. What is the boiler room key doing here? The key to the boiler room. Not where I expected to find it. It's a quiet little town. Days go by, steady as ever. I wanted more for myself, but... Ethan. Marie, I... What are you doing here? I'm waiting for my medication, of course. Why? You're not here for treatment, right? Am I so obvious? <laughs> Only to me. I know you worry about me. I trust you. I'm happy to see you. Me too, Ethan. Is that all? Well, there might be something else. I'm not sure. Tell me. I have nightmares. They keep me awake every night. It seems stupid, I know, but they're terrible. Actually, you're not the only one. No. No one has ever seen the things I see. It's like I'm turning mad. With everything that happened to you these last days, it's no wonder you're feeling stressed. Maybe. Everyone in Darkwater is suffering from nightmares. Really? We don't have any medication left. Oh. There's no excuse then. I should let you work. Take care, Ethan. You too, Marie. I don't get why they have us waiting so long. Where did my fiancé no go? Patients here. I hope those nutcases will stop burdening her with work. Dr. Colden. Dr. Fuller always keeps his key with him. In theory, this is where we hang the key to the boiler room. Dr. Colden, we need you at once in Dormitory B. What is the problem? Mr. Evans seems to be having trouble with his IV. I've done an exam. Deborah is looking after him. And the family of Mrs. Harding is asking to see her medical file. I'll never understand why it's so hard to see patients' files around here. Rules are rules. See, with Dr. Fuller, he's in charge. Anyhow, they're still waiting, and I don't think they'll leave until they get what they want. Understood. Anything else? As a matter of fact, yes. A man has been brought up from the basement. Oh. What state is he in now? You should go see for yourself, Doctor. This man, Edward Pierce. His file is incomplete. What did Fuller do to him? Sorry, but nobody can take anything until I finish the inventory. Please, the few... The operating room is never accessible after an operation. Let's hope I can go through the administration office.
wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Dr. Colden. Mrs. Donovan. Nobody goes into Dr. Fuller's office. But rest assured, I'll tell him you came by. That won't be necessary. Thank you. I will tell him, nonetheless. It's temperamental, if I understand correctly. The door to the boiler room is locked. Where did I see that key? Ah, oh, yes. The office in Block B. The key to the boiler room. All I have to do is shut off the water and hope Donovan takes the bait. Shut this with my bare hands. I need a tool. I feel guilty about Elizabeth, but I need the diversion. Dr. Colden, might there be a problem with the water? I was about to mention it. It seems it's been cut off yet again. I can't take this, Marie. I feel I'm gonna burst. It's not your fault if we have defective plumbing. And yet, I'm the one who gets punished because I'm gonna have to square off with that annoying old witch. Courage, Elizabeth. Here we go. And hold your tongue this time.
last. The missing files must be hidden here. The Stendhal Syndrome. Of course. This is where Fuller found his diagnosis for Francis Sanders. Something is wrong with these masts. It's some sort of puzzle. I've unlocked something. Patient files. I was right. Conclusions? Session number 17. Patient? Sarah Hawkins. Why is Ethan on medication? It goes with this finger belonged to a woman. Why keep it here? Why does Dr. Fuller write psychological reports about Sarah Hawkins? At first, I presumed that her blood was the key. The poor souls downstairs are not Fuller's only subjects. Then James came. I read that Charles was keeping secrets from him. I presume that he will try to break into the basement sooner or later. I am prepared. Hawkins, Fitzroy, and Fuller. What is the connection between these three? It's fortunate that I had the presence of mind to set them all in the basement. When all the fuss about the Hawkins incident finally comes to an end, I will dispose of her belongings. In the meantime, they must remain hidden in plain sight. Of course! Sarah Hawkins is the connection. I must go back to the basement. Patients and hospital personnel eat the same food. That's the Marie that I know. I knew I could count on your scientific curiosity. It's time to show you what you were so eager to discover. Ah! 
If you're gonna shoot me, at least have the decency to look me in the eyes. Turn around. Slowly. Talk, filthy thief, or I swear I'll shoot. Take a minute to look around. Everything points to Charles Hawkins. He's dead. No. He was here for a very specific item. Oh, no. The book. Why was it in the safe? Have you read it? Answer the question. How foolish of you. Now you won't be able to escape his will. What did it show you? She went into Fuller's office. She was looking for Sarah Hawkins' corpse. Sarah Hawkins, you say? Let's go back to the start, shall we? Whose life did the Necronomicon choose to show you? Dr. Colden. She was at the Riverside Institute. She's in danger. I have to go. Wait. No one knows the occult better than me. You might need my help. All right. All right. I might need you after all. Perfect. Let's meet later at the Hawkins Mansion. Now go! Rescue the Doctor! Thank you, Drake.